49 we're on the woes and he's dealing with all the Gentile nations surrounding that in that Middle East area like I said I can always realize why not many people do commentaries in, in Jeremiah here we are, we're doing, huh? Or Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah, another one, Ezekiel. you, you got to realize, here we are, we're doing the book of Revelation, which really giving you an outline. It gives you an outline of what's happening, but in a uh, broad statement. And Jeremiah gets down to the uh, nitty-gritty of things and tells you uh, things that are going to happen. You're sitting there going, oh, I can't believe I don't want this to happen. <laughs> this is bad things. These are things that, you know, uh, the, these are the terror of the Lord. What's that? He can, he's the greatest. He's the, uh, the grace, but don't get on his bad side. Amen. You know? <laughs> Amen. And uh, last week we had, uh, uh, we had uh, looked at, um, we had Moab last week, excuse me, and, uh, and seeing the wash pot. Now, remember, uh, we remember Lot is the uh, actual father of, these, of Moab, and, and this one too. This is the Ammonites. Uh, this is the child, this, the second child, I guess, that was born. It was called Ben-Ami. Ben-Ami, son of uh, friends, son of love, or son of friends, amicable things. Okay? Uh, but you'll notice it did have a Ben in it. And Ben is, a, is, is the Hebrew, Hebrew for son. Benjamin, son of my right hand. Okay? And so I looked and I was like, you know, these, this one's for Moab, I can understand. That's just everybody in a wash pot getting together. Kind of like, I can understand that because we live in a USA, the Americas, and that's a wash pot here. So we can understand a wash pot. Uh, ben Ami, uh, uh, the Ammonites, they're, they're kind of like, uh, kind of like acting, trying to, trying to put forth, hey, you know, from the area and everything, kind of look like it and everything else. Uh, you know, but of course, they're not like it. They're fake Jews, kind of like fake Jews. You know, uh, kind of like a spiritual thing, you know, in the Bible with that. And, uh, and throughout the Bible, these are the people in time, like through the book of Joshua. Uh, first, it was with Sihon and Og in, uh, in the book of Numbers, where they were on the other side of Jordan. And there was, uh, there, may, there was problems there. And then after they came over Jordan, what did they have? They had, still had problems with those guys. Why? Well, Israel didn't do what they were supposed to do. What's that? Get them out of there. Isn't that what he told them? Go up there, kid. Get this place. Everybody get them out of there. I'm giving you this land. Why? Well, he, he decided. He said the, the cup, the cup of the iniquity of the Amorites is, is, is about it. That's it. I've had enough. You go up there and get rid of them. Uh, was the punishment complete to the, Am to the Amorites? At all? No, it wasn't. It wasn't complete. Why? He didn't get, get, kick them all out. You know, there's Jabez still, uh, the Jebusites were still there and uh, took all the way till the time of David to get rid of the Jebusites. You know, Israel's got a problem. You know what the problem is? They don't know how to listen. But it isn't even though that they don't know how to listen, they don't know how to love the Lord. They only love them so far. And I think that's the same with all, all peoples. We, we just, you know, we, we talk a lot about loving the Lord. I bet you if you... If we all went out together, said, you know, we're going to get a survey done this week, and we got clipboards and everything else, went out and started asking people who loves the Lord, you'd find out that there'd probably be uh, uh, anybody who thinks they're uh, a Christian in some type of walk, wherever, uh, what faith, what religion, and you know what they'd say? Yeah. Then you'd say, hey, do you believe in heaven? You'd probably have 50% say yeah. You do realize that, don't you? You know what that tells you about people that they're they're stupid, they're idiots. You know, uh, uh, you know, people don't even believe there's a God anymore. Uh, they say they don't, they do, but they say that they'll say, "Well, I don't believe in a God." But if you tell them about if the, if there's a heaven, you think, "Yeah, I go there. That's where I should." You don't even believe the guy, and you want to go there. 
you know, if there is one. And uh, we understand what's going to happen. You can only push God out so long, and sooner or later, uh, you're going to push him too far. And, uh, and he, ain't, he, he doesn't need these people. He's just going to go about it, what he does. Okay, uh, people think, well, I didn't believe in him. I, what does that mean? That doesn't. If he's there, it doesn't matter. You get what I'm saying? And if he's not there, well, nobody loses. Everybody's nobody loses. But if he's there, you lose. You see? And that's what they'll never understand. Today, I, I, I got to tell you, today, uh, witnessing is more like going over to uh, Jerusalem and bowing before the wall. And talking to it like those guys do. What's that? You're just talking to a wall. That's us witnessing today. Yeah. Feel like you're talking to a wall a lot of times. But let's face it, you're going to get onesies and twosies, and that's what the good thing is. You get onesies and twosies. Amen. It's still white out there. Amen. So let's go into uh, chapter 49, and the cup of fury is coming. And. Uh, uh, guess what? It's going to be the same message. Same message all the time. Uh, the same message God gives. He's not changing the message. It's it's going to stay the same. Go to uh, why keep your place in in Jeremiah and get a quick look back to Isaiah Isaiah fifty one. Remember, Isaiah is a look at the northern tribes going away. Jeremiah is the remnant falling apart, going the same way as basically the, the northern tribes. Spiritually for us, the, Isaiah would be the evangelicals going away. You know, the music and everything else that they got. They don't care about the Lord anymore. Just tell you what you want to hear. I mean, I, I hear people, uh, down, you know, a pastor got on it tonight. I'm like, on what? I asked a guy, I said, what did he get on? Oh, drinking and smoking. I said, he's got a lot of people in there drinking and smoking? I don't have anybody drinking and smoking in here. I wish I did. I'd yell at them. <laughs> Why? Because nobody else would care. I'd be the pastor of the year. Keep coming in. Hey, I'll just yell about smoking. Hey, they don't, the government doesn't even like the tobacco companies. But you know something? Here I was out in Kentucky... Uh, a few years ago, in a church that was a Bible-believing church with a lot of saved people in it, and you know what the know what grew that church? All that tobacco that was outside of that place, and that church was cut in the middle of a tobacco field. And the first thing the guy says when I walk through, uh, he looks at me. They knew I was a pastor of a church because I, you know, and kind of they asked me, or I, I don't know, came out. And the guy looked at me and go, you ain't one of them preachers, please get tobacco, are you? I said, not tonight. <laughs> you can't farm in that state unless you grow it. Yeah, I, I actually uh, didn't say, I, I, don't, I don't care about that. You know, you want to do it, you do it. Okay, there's no, thou shalt not smoke. I don't see it in there. Is it in there? Thou I please. not devile the temple you know? of God. Oh, that's, that's doctrine. That's bringing in what you're teaching and stuff like that. If you see that part, that's spiritual. You know, God looks at the body like this, so. He takes our soul. What does he care? That's going to be left here anyway. It's with all the other stuff down here. You know, he looks at the soul a lot more, you see. <coughs> all right, so Isaiah uh, 51, look down at, uh, we'll start at verse number uh, 21, 51, 21, he says, Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken. But look what it says, not with wine. You're not sober, but it isn't wine that's affecting you. Okay? Verse number 22, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of cup of fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them 
that went over and God says uh, they've afflicted you. Guess what? Times are coming. Yeah, Times are coming. Okay? You think just uh, just one place? Uh, when Israel went down, you know, everybody. And nobody ever thinks of this. Uh, Israel is the eye, is the God's eyes are always upon it, he said. In, uh, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 11, my eyes are always upon it. He's looking at Jerusalem. There's, there's a, there's a, we look at it and we go, well, the Lord's looking over here. Uh, he, he doesn't, he's not looking at here. He's not looking at America. America's not his, his place. Israel is his place. He's looking there. He's not looking here. We have too much, we have too much in our heads of uh, high-mindedness. That God wants to look here. No, right now, he's looking in Jerusalem right now. He's worried about that land. Why? That's the one he established. You don't see him establishing us in here, do you? No. We can be put away. There's Look, we can go away. We're not even in it. The concerning of any of these, we're not there. This is the end times. We're not even there. If, if we were going to be there, God could put us right in. But we're not even in there. You say, well, these aren't in there either. They still are there. The land's still there. You see? But God's got a plan, and guess what? We ain't in it. We're just not in it. The Bible says back in uh, chapter 49 is uh, after the cup of fury that's coming, and he's got the same message planned here, um, concerning the Ammonites. Thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth their king and her dad? And his people dwell in his city. Why are they there? That's what God's asking. These are my cities. I built these. Why are these people here? What are they doing in God? Is what he's saying right here. Ben Ami, what are you doing? What are these people doing in God? Why are they dwelling in our uh, cities? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah, the Ammonite, of the Ammonites, and it shall be a, a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. How, O ye Heshbon? For Ai is spoiled. Cry, ye daughters of Rabbah, Gird you with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro by the hedges. For their king shall go into captivity, and his priests and his princes together. Wherefore gloriest thou in the valleys, thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, that trusted in her uh, treasures, saying, Who shall come unto me? Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those that be about thee, and ye shall be driven out every man right forth, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. And afterward, I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. I love the last part. It's like a silver lining in the end. Okay? God's going to do all that mess, and, and then he sits up there at the end, and he says, hey, what? Well, but I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring back the captivity of things. Why? Well, you have to understand, God's not, God's not totally grievous. He, he wants the good to come out of his people. He doesn't, he doesn't want horror. We, we are the ones that, that, that bring all the horror. But the first part, he says, concerning the Ammonites, what are they doing in Jerusalem? You know, one of the big things you'll see is, uh, in the Bible, they're misplaced here and uh, in, in that area. And here's the other thing. Do you remember when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant and they took it back to Philistine country? Do you notice all the plagues that happened? Plague happened one town, the other. It just starts getting worse. It spreads from town to town as the Ark moves. There it goes with them. Well, why is that? Well, once you put the Ark there and the law's there, it's under the law. Now, what is Israel under at that time? They're under the law. So if you're going to be an, Ammon, an, an Ammonite and you want to go into those areas, guess what you become? Under the law. So you've got to understand now you have imputable sin once you get under the law and you're going to be under God's hand. And now that he has his people uh, are going to be displaced, what do you think you're going to do? Sit at the beach and have a good time on your lounge chair? 
I, I pulled my people out of the land? And you've, dis, you've been displacing them for years uh, in my land? Guess what? It's time. What's that? It's your time now. There's a ripple effect to things. God is not slack concerning these promises. Now it's God versus Ammon. Who do you think is going to win? Amen. Look at verse number uh, 2. He says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in uh, Rabbah. Everybody remembers Rabbah. What? That's a high place. You remember a guy by name Samuel? Where he go worship? In Rabbah. You know, he goes up there. It's a high place and stuff where things are. And uh, Rabbah. And, and, uh, and, it's, and it says Rabbah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a desolate heap. Her daughters shall be burned with fire. What's what he says? Then shall Israel be heir um, unto them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. He, he says, you, you, you know, you, you need to give it back. Verse number uh, three. How, O Heshbon, for Ai. You remember Ai, don't you? It was Jericho. They came across Jordan. The first place was Jericho. That was a picture of conquering the world. Uh, the Lord did it himself. Uh, he turned around. He, they walked around it, and they shouted, and the walls came down. Joshua, you know the old song, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Ooh, Jericho, ooh. Don't you guys remember that stuff? Yeah. It was a good song. Okay, got all the kids that can't go on. Well, anyway, um, Joshua uh, from Jericho is a picture of conquering the world, and God does that. He just walk up, and, and that's it. But Ai, uh, they went up there. What happened? They got chased away. It was a small one, and they got chased away. And it was harder for them to get. Why? Well, you're going to have a problem with Ai the rest of your life, he's saying. Why? Because you've got a flesh, and it's a picture of your flesh. And you've been fighting that battle ever since, haven't you? Ai, harder battle. He says to him, he says, How, O Heshbon, the stronghold, why? For Ai is spoiled. Cry, ye daughters of Rabbah, gird you with sackcloth, mourn, lament, and run to and fro by the hedges. For their king shall go into captivity, and his priests and his, uh, and his princes together, I mean, you know what, there's a big problem with God here, and one of the problems is, you're in the wrong place, what are you doing in my place, you know, you're taking up space, and I'm looking to spread out, I told my people to occupy and move you out, and you, they had not moved you out, so guess what, I'm going to have a problem with you, and although they wouldn't do it, I know that's my land, and I want you out of there. You do realize that God picks who lives in the lands. I mean, up north, he gave it to who? Japheth. Over to the east, he gives that one to Shem. Down south, he gives it to Ham. What, what, is, uh, what is Japheth doing down in Africa, down at the bottom of Africa, when it's not his? He'll be out of there. He'll be out of there. Just like people who keep going in. Oh, we got Russia. They want to. They want part of the. They want part of Jerusalem. They want part of Israel. What part? All of it. And what are they going to get? Absolutely yeah. nothing. Everybody wanted a peace, but not. You're not going to get it like that. Amen. God already delivered it. Verse number four. Wherefore, glorious thou, in the valleys, thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter. Thou trusted in her treasures, saying, Who shall come up unto me? Who shall come unto me? They trusted in things that they start building their treasures. They start building their back line of it. Uh, there's, my, there's my line. I'm building something here. What's that? Well, that's the part that you're going to praise and everything. And what God's saying is, you got some false security here. You know, you have, we have false security in this country. We built big cathedrals. In the, in the world. Did you ever notice that a lot of Christendom, they built these great, big, huge cathedrals. And guess what? Those same cathedrals are no more than a heel to us now that we're dragging along right now. Do you think that's going to stop anything? I mean, it's been, even though it's not one of, it's not a, a, a real Christian um, building or anything, but you remember what happened in Notre Dame, right? Over in France. Didn't take long, did it? One, one day... Bye. 
real fast. All them years to build it in one day, it's gone. It can be gone. They have to rebuild it again, take billions of dollars or something like that. Uh, they will, they'll, you know, talking to them like they're going to rebuild the thing. Well, just let it go. Just let it go. It didn't do anything for anybody anyway. A bunch of gargoyles on a, on a, on a thing they're calling Christian. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense half the time. A whole bunch of idolatry on their buildings, and they think they're Christian. I don't see how, it, I, I gotta tell you, I hope you're on here in the Roman Catholic. I don't know how you can do it. Yeah. Go into a building with a bunch of statues, kissing these statues, tic tac toeing, doing all this religion, and you can't see what's going on. Stories all the time, even on television, about people bowing down to statues and dogs in, in uh, the Ten Commandments. This will be the meal. Everybody watched it, and they can't see their own church. Something's wrong with them. What's that? Spiritual blindness. And in fact, physical blindness, if they can't see these things. Doesn't make a, a, a hill of sense. Verse number uh, five, behold. I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those uh, that be about, about thee. And ye shall be driven out every man right forth, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. After, and afterward I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon. Of course there's a, a silver lining, okay? Uh, if you'll notice, it's just so you know, it says it twice, that last verse. In in, uh, in verse number uh, six, uh, look over look over to um, verse number thirty nine. There's another one, Elam. Elam. He says, "I'll bring back the captivity of uh, Elam." Right there. Okay. So uh, back to uh, verse number uh, five. Okay. Now he he's he's saying what you're trusting is. And some of the things they were trusting in over here, uh, they were trusting in their gods. The, if you don't know their gods, their god at this time was somebody by the name of Milcom. Milcom was their god. Uh, Molech was, was a god there. And guess what he's trying to say? These guys can't save you. These guys can't save you. What you're trusting in, it will not save you. Okay? Your sacrifices, they will not save you. Nothing on this is going to work. Uh, verse number uh, 7. Concerning Edom. Now we've done away with Ammon. Okay? We understand that Ammon's going away, and, but at the end God's going to do what? Bring back their captivity. Bring them back to the land. He'll bring them back. Well, well I want to start over again with a, with, with a, a, a more pure crew. Uh, concerning Edom. We'll, we'll look at Edom here. And he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in taming? Is counsel uh, perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Okay. Now, uh, Edom is a different type of character, and we need to go look at Edom a little bit. I'll show you why. Uh, go to uh, Genesis 36. Well, he noticed two places. He said Edom, and he said Taman. Does everybody know who Edom is? Esau. Esau. Esau is Edom. Genesis 36. You know, I forgot to put in there that um, there have been, I think, I think God has uh, four prophets that he, that he sent actually to, uh, to the Ammonites. And uh, that's, that's put in Amos was one, Zephaniah, Jeremiah, and uh, I have it here, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Genesis 36. Genesis 36. Look at verse number um, 15. Look at 15. These were dukes. Does anybody understand? A duke is a guy that has territory. Okay, regional territory. A duke of Earl, the duke of this, the duke of that, the, uh, the, the English say. These were dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz. Anybody remember this guy, Eliphaz? We're going to go see him soon. Uh, Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau. Here he is, duke what? Taman. Okay, Duke Taman is the grandson of Esau, and he's a, 
he becomes the duke. What's that? He has the land. So Eliphaz, uh, better yet, go to Job chapter 1. We'll see it there. Esau and then Taman, uh, Eliphaz and then Taman. Job chapter 4. Now look in Job chapter 4 and look at the four, look at the first verse. Then Eliphaz, one of Job's friends, okay, the Temanite. Okay? Temanite. What's that? He lives in his son's area. His son's the Duke. It was named after him. He's under his son's, he lives in his son's territory, so he is a Temanite. Okay? It, it starts to what it does is it, it helps you with putting a, a place to Job, because a lot of people will think that Job was a contemporary of Abraham, and I actually believe that. If you go back to uh, Genesis chapter 10, uh, it says Jobab, which would mean Father Job. So I thought, well, he's before Abraham, and then he lived until uh, Taman. He lived until the days of Taman because Eliphaz is the son of Esau, and Taman is his son. So he had to be very old. I came out with like 300 and something years old, and then I realized something. I didn't see anybody living to that age after uh, the flood except for Arphaxad and, uh, and Noah. So maybe Job isn't what we thought he was as far as where he was. He could be a just a contemporary of Eliphaz that was living in Tem in Tema. I don't know. We really don't know. He doesn't exactly put it in the book, but oh well. But it still is the first chronologically written book in the Bible. Amen? Okay? That's just what I just what I thought in that area. You can go and think anything else. It ain't going to matter. But concerning this Edom, he says... And he says, is wisdom no more in Taman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? And what kind of, is it, what kind of uh, uh, wisdom we would be talking about? What we'd be talking about is worldly wisdom. Not the type of wisdom you're getting. It's the worldly wisdom. And what has happened, he's turned to man's wisdom here. And listening to man's wisdom here, and, he, and in the end he says, Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dadan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. If grape gatherers, now watch how he says this, if grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? Uh, uh, you see an open field, you go in, you, you're taking some grapes out of here, but you're not like taking them all, are you? You're just taking enough for yourself. And that's what he's talking about. And he says, even a thief, look at the next part, he says, if thieves by night, they will destroy or take, they will destroy, they don't care. Uh, anybody here has been a soldier and you go into a house uh, to, to try and like, uh, uh, like, you got to clear the area, so you got to clear the houses. I, I just want you to know we don't we we don't sit there and be polite. You know, you kick the door in, okay? Everybody out! Everybody, hey, what's that? Throw the table to the side or whatever. Let's go. Everybody outside. What's that? We're not nice about it. Let's go. Got to get something done. And we just push. Get out. Get out here. And that's a, a that's how soldiers are. They go in and knock things down, take what they want, take what it's take what they want. But when they're done with what they want, what do they do? They leave. Yep. And that's what that second part is telling you. It says, it says, if thieves by night, they will destroy till they have what? Enough. That enough. I'm okay with. I took what I wanted to take. He's talking about. You know, the troops that are passing, they take things. Uh, verse 10, but I have made Esau a bear, bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to do what? He can't hide himself. He can't hide himself. His seed's spoiled. And his uh, brethren and his neighbors, and, and, and what? And he is what? Uh, just so you know, that's one of those to be or not to be verses. What's that? He is not. Uh, they, uh, there's a lot of people that, pr that, that preach that there's a, the lost soul is eternal. What did he just say? He is not. Gone. He's gone. 
He says, but I have made Esau bare and uncovered the secret places. He shall not be able to hide himself. There's no second chance here. His seed is spoiled. And his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. He's not. He's not. He's been judged. Do you remember this guy? Go to Malachi chapter uh, 1. Let's deal with Esau. Let's see what God says about Esau. Imagine what people learn and know about you. Malachi, just before we get to uh, Matthew, the last book of the Old Testament. And the Bible says in chapter 1, verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi, I have loved you. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou uh, loved us? Here he says, was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, verse 3, and I hated who? Esau. Esau. I didn't like him. Why? Well, you remember that kid? There was a birthright out there. You know what that birthright would have done for him? You know, if we would have been reading the Bible today and he, and he would have stayed the course and was, wouldn't have fell and wouldn't have taken the path he did, we'd be saying right now, the God of Abraham... The God of Isaac, the God of Esau. But that's not what he wanted. He despised that birthright. Ah, uh, what's it going to do for me right now? That's what he was saying. What can that birthright do for me? What is it going to purchase? You know, it's no different than people today. They see their families. Their families are good families. Their families are together families. But there's one kid who's a rebel. And you know what he says? What they can, what, what's that going to do for me? Right now, oh, you're gonna, uh, your kid, you're inheriting a good heritage uh, in the church. I, I work as a deacon in the church, son. This is a good heritage. What's that gonna do for me? That's an Esau. What's that gonna do for me? What do I get from it? A gift card from Starbucks? That's how they look at things. And he, and he, this boy is a judge that the Lord, he hates his attitude. Verse eleven. Down in 49, leave thy, leave, leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them how alive and let thy widows trust me. You ever notice there's always that fatherless and the widows? But you'll notice something he says here. He says children. And what does he say about these uh, children? He says, I'll preserve them what? I'll preserve the kids. I'm going to let the kids go in. You know, uh, you know what the, know what he's trying to show you in there? The children are saved until they're older. Okay, I was alive once without the law. That's what Paul said. I was alive with less. Uh, I was alive once without the law. And then what he said? Then sin revived, and I died. The commandment came. Sin revived. I died. What's that? You sinned now. You understood what you were doing. He says, "Thou shalt not do this," and you did it. You know it now. Amen. Okay, and you're accountable uh, for what that says. Uh, verse number, go back, it's verse number 11. I will preserve them alive. Let the children go in. Child, widows and the fatherless. I watched so many churches dump the widow once the man dies. And what is God sitting there saying? I'm with the widows and the fatherless. Widows, fatherless. Well, she ain't have a mission no more. Now you just can put more bunny in your pocket and not, and not have her eat next week. Ah, oh, you know, she collects those security. Amen. I know, I, know, I know how the church is. Amen. He says, verse number 12, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. And art, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely... A drink of it. You, you know, a lot of times people are, uh, they got the spoils. They're very spoiled today, and they don't think they should get this uh, wrath or anything else. I, I got to tell you something. I'm like that, aren't you? I, I have a great, I, I think it's a great time in the church. We're going to go along, and we're going to, and it's going to be like every day, well, you know, the next day or something like that. And then finally, what happens? God's, God's got to deal with the uh, earth and deal with all these people down here. That he, he wants to do, wants to bring judgment. You know what he says? I've got to get my kids out of there. Why? 
They're my kids. You, you, hey, look, if the house was on, if, if you were going to set the house on fire at, uh, at 5 o'clock, you're going to have your kids in there? No, you're going to pull your kids out of there. Why? Because you're, you, you're compassionate and you know what's going to happen. The Lord knows it's going to happen. What's he going to do? Pull his kids out. It would only be normal. He showed us that. I, I, I got some people, they think, oh, you know, uh, he's got to leave us here for the trip. Why? Well, who's going to witness those people? God couldn't trust us. Think about it. He started a church, right? Did he grab Peter, James, and John as the leader? As to go out and do it? The one that's going to be the, the, to the gospel of the uncircumcised, the, the Gentiles? No, he didn't pick Peter, James, and John. What did he do? He went and got a new guy that was born, that was born again when? In the church age. That's who he got, Paul. So what's that tell you about the tribulation? Got seven years. It's going to be those guys that, that he pulls out right in the beginning, the 144, Moses and Elijah. He needs some real good people. He ain't got much time. Three and a half years uh, in the first part of the trib is not, a, not very much time to get people saved. He can't rely on us. Why? Well, most people don't even do it. And I got to tell you something, most of the people that talk about going through the tribulation, they're not out on the streets. Why shouldn't they be? Amen. But the, he, he's making sure of some things here. The cup is still here for you to drink, you know, he said. Hey, it, you know, it's still here. And you're going to drink it soon, you know. Uh, you, you've, you've, got a second, you've got a second chance, but guess what? Um, you're, gonna, you're, you're not going to get, that's it. And then look, look, the other part is there's these people out there, okay? And they think they're not going to deal with uh, any punishment uh, during even the tribulation. You're going to see why. they got armed security guards around them. You ever see a guy like Mark Zuckerberg walk down the street? He's got an even line uh, around him of, of uh, bodyguards, and he walks in the middle as he walks, and they walk around him. Uh, he pays them each money, and he's got armed security around him, and secret service is around the president and everything else, and there's going to come a time when God's going to turn around and had enough of him, too. Yeah. And he's going he's gonna to blink his eye, and you think that secret service is going to help Joe Biden? You think secret service is going to keep him? That ain't going to keep him. They'll run away before, they'll run away before they protect him when God comes to town out of just plain uh, fear. You're not going to get away here. Verse number uh, 13. You thought you were. For I have sworn by myself. Who could God swear by? Himself. Yeah, and, and the, bad part of, the bad part for anybody about that is the moment he swears to himself, it's done. bad luck for the other guy. <laughs> it's like God writing something down in the book. Heaven and earth is going to pass away before that goes away. And that's what people don't understand. I hope God's wrong. I really do. I hope God's wrong, and this never none of this stuff happens. I hope He's wrong, and I'm I, I would I'm not betting on it though. That'd be a bad bet, wouldn't it? It's already written. That's right. <laughs> but I hope I'm wrong. Verse number thirteen. I have sworn by myself. And at that moment, Porky Pig comes out, and he comes out, and he goes uh, out of the drum, and he says, "Bidee, bidee, 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 bidee." That's all, folks, <laughs> because it is. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra—that's their capital, Basra—shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Isn't that a great thing to hear about the future of your land? We had this great city. It's called New York City. And, and it, was, it was the mega of everything. The Big Apple. God loves it, I guess, or something like that. How's it been for the last 20, 30 years? Yeah. It's been a mess. Now there's now you go there's it's total crime. You can't even businesses are fleeing the place like mad. What's happening? Well you know what's happening. For sure. You know what's happening. You know what the problem is? Man. Man's the problem. He says, Basra shall, have, shall become a desolation, a perpetual, there'll be perpetual wastes all your areas. I mean, their capital city just gone. I have heard a rumor 
For I have heard a rumor from the Lord. Yeah, we don't listen to rumors. Do you listen to rumors? I don't. I don't think they do either. Why? He says, I've heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up uh, to the battle. And, and they barely ever listen to him. But who's the ambassador? Well, the ambassador is a preacher. That's who we send an ambassador as a preacher. Now, what's going to happen with this reading is from uh, right here is uh, like the book of uh, Obadiah. In fact, it kind of goes along uh, right here with Obadiah. Uh, let's go over to Obadiah. If you go to Amos, it's the next book. If you uh, see Jonah, you went one too far. It's the shortest book in the Old Testament as 3 John is the uh, shortest book in the New Testament. And some of these you're going to uh, uh, hear again. It's almost uh, almost verbatim of, uh, of verses 1 to like 8 or 1 to 9. And the Bible says, The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Isn't that what we're on right now? Edom. We have heard a rumor isn't it, from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. You're small, but you're despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. They were living actually in the side of the mountains, these Edomites. And that little mountain that they're living in right there is down near an area called Sela Petra. Yeah. And that's where the Jews will be going to when the, when the second half of the trib and they, they be revived. Okay? Uh, it, they will be dwelling in the clefts of the rock. And he says, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down uh, to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Okay, uh, in a spiritual sense, now look at that in a spiritual sense. Okay, you've got people, they live very high. You know, they're rich, live very high. Uh, they, they think, who's going to bring me down to the ground? As uh, he says, thou exalt thyself as an eagle. You know, they got the eagles, eagles all around them and stuff, uh, uh, putting up things as that, uh, like statues. And he says, though thou set thyself, thy nests, uh, among the stars, you like, there's like rich people, they like to be about the movie stars and all that stuff. They like to be in the center of attention with the, I need attention out here. Hey, look, we just went through a former president who was basically, it was a movie star. He liked that star down there and stuff like that. But he was different. He got knocked down from the stars and he had to become almost a real person. But most of our people just like to live among them. Hey, you know, I can get my name in the lights. And you know what God says? I'm going to bring you down. Imagine when the tribulation hits and how Hollywood's going to deal with it. All that glitter and all that niceness and all them nice dresses that are all slinky and all this other stuff. Next thing you know, begging for food, wanting to get a husband of somebody because you can't, you're going to need somebody to protect you. You see? Because it's every man for himself. And every, every man's hand will be against every man. Uh, uh, I got to tell you something. In the tribulation, glad you're not going to be, be there because guess what? It's going to be a bad day for women and small men. Every man for himself. Amen. Back to Obadiah. He says, If thieves come to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they, would they not have stolen till they had enough? Remember, we just read that. If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? They just want what they, they just want to satisfy themselves. How are things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The women, the men that were 
at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They told you they wanted peace. They were peaceful with thee. And what happens? They saw weakness. They that eat, eat thy bread have laid a, a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and, and understanding out of the mount of Esau and thy mighty men, O Taman, see it's there, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of mount of Esau may be cut off by how? By slaughter. You know, you think you're okay uh, trying to rise up, trying to hide, trying to get everywhere else? Uh, it's not. You can go as high as you want. It ain't going to happen. I'll dig them rocks out. I'll do whatever I have to. Uh, I'll just do this. Here's a good one. I'll just make an earthquake. It'll shake so hard you'll be coming out of those hills. Falling out of them. There's nowhere to run, people. He says, no army. That The reason why Selah is going to be big and we're going to read down in verse number 16. It says, Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest, uh, it's in Jeremiah chapter, verse 16, excuse me, the, that holdest the height of the hill. We got the high ground. That though thou uh, shouldest make thy nest as high as an eagle, I will bring uh, thee down uh, from thence. And that place that he's talking about, the reason why they're, oh, I can, do, you know, I'm up here and I'm up there. Nobody can do anything. There's no way to get an army up the Seal of Petra. It, it's just too, it's got cliffs and you just can't get up there. So these people were living up there as protection against invading armies. And it was good protection, obviously, because they were still there. Now, when Israel went into captivity and they were coming down, they were, they, were, they were making it hard for them actually to leave at that time and attacking them as they were leaving and going in. And that was in Obadiah that brings it out. And, uh, you know, and, and God's like, you think, you, you think that's funny, huh? You think it's funny. You think you're going to hold off in the rock. You see that one is unpenetrable, and everybody talks about it unpenetrable. It's not going to be unpenetrable long when I put a, a 11 earthquake in the area. Now, Edom is a different, different type of character here. Edom has, uh, as, as uh, the Ammonites had four preachers preach to them, uh, Edom has had five preachers preach unto them. And that is located in Amos chapter 1, verse 11, Isaiah 21, 11, here, uh, Ezekiel 25, 12 to 14, and also in the book of Obadiah. And you know what? There was no repentance after those five times. Not the Ammonites, not the Edomites. Uh, verse number, uh, chapter 49, verse number 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Every one that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues uh, thereof. And you go place. I don't know how many places I've been to uh, up here in northern New York. I find dead towns and I go in and I say, what happened? I wonder what happened to this town. I remember years ago uh, when I first came into Governor, I came in and I noticed one thing. There was no King James Bible anywhere. There was nobody believed the book anywhere. They were all going to these charismatic churches, falling on the ground, acting like idiots. The best of the best in Governor uh, seemed to worship Jimmy Swaggart. The best of the best of, New of this area that I found, the best Christians, they worshipped Jimmy Swagger. That's what I found. You know the guy who went with the prostitutes in his limo and still preaching? Two times it happened and he's still preaching? Isn't that something? And people, said, people still, oh, he's the greatest. He, he doesn't even preach the gospel anymore. Unbelievable people. He should come in here and sit here for a little while, really get good. I'll teach him the Bible. He'll really like his little singing going on. Amen. Uh, verse number, uh, verse number um, 18. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there. Neither shall a son of man uh, dwell in it. Do you remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? It's underneath the, the Dead Sea. 
You see the Dead Sea down there? What happened? Well, God threw some baseballs down. They were hailstones and brimstones, and he threw them down on them until they were all the way covered. It's now the lowest part on the earth. Sodom and Gomorrah. Underneath the Dead Sea, the lowest place on the whole planet. It's under the Dead Sea, fire and brimstone. And you know what? It's, a, it, it's, it's, it's this, the present, or the future. What's that? We're not going to have anybody dwell in it. How many people you hear from Sodom now? It's not around. They just replanted over here. Amen. Verse 19, Behold, he, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan. He's going to come up hard against the habitation of the strong, but I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is, who's like me? Who's going to be the shepherd? Who's going to be like me? Who, who's a shepherd? Anyone? Do we have anyone out there that's going to be like him? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand uh, before me? Well, we'll just look at it like this. Nobody. No one. Verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes. See the difference? Not just him. What he wants to do. That he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate uh, with them. You remember a people by the name of the Jebusites in chapter, uh, what was it, 5 uh, with uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6 when they reclaimed Jerusalem? What did the Jebusites say to David? They said, uh, you, you can come up here, uh, bring your crippled and blind and, and deaf, like uh, that you couldn't, even, you couldn't even get up here. We could take you with them. That won't even matter. And David turned around and said, I'll come in there with my blind and deaf. <laughs> but he's saying, what he's saying here, you, you think, you know, I can send the least of them and they'll still win. You know, I mean, God's saying, I got the, I got my crippled. I got my people who, who, who aren't even allowed in the tabernacle, we'll say. I'll take the least of them. And you know what? I can still beat you. That's how God looks at things. Verse number, uh, verse number 21. The earth is moved. Well, hell's enlarging itself, so why shouldn't it move? Do you realize that some of these earthquakes out here are because the, it's L beneath us is moving? It's actually getting larger, he says. It's never full, he says. It just gets larger. The earth is moved. There's, there's, it's, it's shaken at the noise of their fall, at the cry of, the noise thereof was heard uh, in the Red Sea. And, you know, all the way to that point, I mean, uh, you realize that they come when you come down from uh, Israel down to Edom, which is underneath south of the Dead Sea, okay, you would have to go a pretty good distance to get over the Red to the Red Sea. And he says, they can see it all the way over there. That's how bad it becomes. See it all the way over. In that area. Uh, it was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and, and do what? Fly as an eagle. And spread his wings over Basra, their capital city. And at that day shall the heart of mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Now, her pangs, uh, we went over that. That's her, like, uh, pains for birth. They're called the pangs. Uh, but a woman in travail, oh, 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 that's what he's saying. But there's a positive to this, and nobody picks up on that. She has a baby. And there's the positive of it. And you say, what does that mean? God's ending it with a positive. What's that? There's a, there's a part of a, re there could be a rebirth here. You see, when something dies, you can do, there's something that can happen when something dies, and we never look at it. And that is, that's how revival works. We've been calling revivals, revivals, revivals when the thing's not dead. If it's not dead, it, it, you can't revive it. You revive something that is dead. 
So that's what God's trying to say, a, a new birth, a birth here. What's that from her pangs? There's going to be a, there's a new birth. There's something good coming out of this, okay? Don't always think it's all bad, it's all bad. Look, in the millennium, God's going to get rid of all the old junk, all them people and everything, get rid of them. Why? They're not, they can't work with them. You think you're, hey, hey, how, what would you do? Now you make yourself God. What would you do with a guy like Adam Schiff? <laughs> well, would you keep him? I'll start off on this guy. He's going to be pretty good. He lies all the time. We'll do, you know how fast it would end? <laughs> he's going to cut all them people out. And then he's going to start. See, people think the millennium, this is how people think the millennium is. Whoever's left, that's who I'm going to start on with. Oh, he's going to get rid of them too. Here, come on, wrap them all in, get rid of them. Why? I can't want to work with this person they didn't listen to before. Let's start with a new crowd, okay? I got my people coming down here. There's, there's people that got saved in this time. Here's some people. We came into Jerusalem. He said there's two types of people that are going to be there. Who? Well, one people is going to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What's that? The saved people. And then I got another person. What's that? There's going to be some people when he gets into Israel that are actually going to be still there that obeyed the law. He says that have the Ten Commandments. What's that? They're all they're they're Jews that didn't get saved, and then they got through. Why? Didn't you ever see how much uh, stuff is in the Old Testament to get through the tribulation? I mean, there's probably more on the tribulation in the uh, Old Testament than ever in the New Testament. What's that tell you? Well, if they're reading the Old Testament, they could probably get through. Get back to their diet. Go back to the law. Do what you have to do. Uh, be be pure inside. Eat the right foods. Maybe you'll get through. And there are some people that are going to get through. How do you know? Guy showed up. God said there's two different people here. One that had the testimony of Jesus Christ, and then the other one, that, and they that kept the commandments. We, we got guys that, look, this is how stupid dispensational salvation is. I'll give it to you. They got three and a half years to get saved in the, in the tribulation. It, he brings out the best professionals there are. He got these 144,000 that he's going to send out. He's got Moses. He's got Elijah. They saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Okay? Other people are going to get saved through, and they're going to, their eyes are going to get woken, are going to wake up, and they're going to see all these things. Okay? These are the people he's going to be using. You really can't be thinking that, you know, there's going to be some, some a big, huge, uh, you know, move movement of that. You know, it's still you got to understand. Three and a half years. You think he's going to change the salvation? Oh no, you're going to be under the wall. How long is it going to take to teach them? <laughs> I remember the first time, and they were the best people on earth. Those those Hebrews. And guess what? They didn't get it right. He had to teach them. He taught them. He taught them all the laws in the Exodus. He taught them the moral law, the civil law. He gets to Leviticus, takes them a month. He writes the Levitical law, the ceremonial law. And then we go into numbers and we say, see what? How do all those laws do? Yeah. That's the best people on earth, Larry. How'd they do? They failed, didn't they? Now, they got to have both. They got to have the testimony of Jesus Christ, and then they got to keep the law. You think this one's going to work? Whoever taught that is a fool. Three and a half years and they're going to be able to do it. Isn't that be so? I've been teaching for how long? 12 years. He ain't picked up all this stuff. I don't even know all this stuff. People ask me. I'm like, I did that like four years ago. I don't know a thing about it at the time. I know a little bit if I get back to it, but not as much as I did when I was doing it. The same with you when you're studying. You, can, you, you got it and then, you know, a, a, a few months down the line... You forgot it. It's in your soul, but you forgot it. You think these people are going to be able to do that in the tribulation with hailstones and everything else coming at them? I think we give ourselves too much credit to say these things. Amen? All right, so uh, next week we'll start in concerning Damascus. Uh, if you want to see that uh, part ahead of time, just go to Isaiah. What is it? Isaiah 17. It'll start to tell you the woes of, uh, of Damascus, okay? So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's end this one there, and next week we'll do the rest, probably the rest of the chapter, and we'll struggle along and get through uh, Jeremiah. I'll be crying the whole way. Amen.
Father, thank you, Lord God, for teaching us this, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that uh, it's heavy. It gets on your heart, Lord. Uh, Lord God, it's a harsh book of a lot of judgment. But, Lord, uh, if they don't want that right hand of fellowship, this is what they get, and the majority is getting it. So it's going to be a lot of the majority of this book. We thank you, Lord, that we, we took and we sucked with you, Lord God, and we went back to Calvary and we got saved, Lord Father. We thank you for sending your son. We thank you for his testimony. Most of all, we thank you, Lord, for salvation through Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. We want to serve you here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Um, Maggie Lax is on. Hey, Maggie. Laura Passahow. Hey, Laura. Good to see you guys. Amen. <laughs>